The SRX series has been saved, kind of. With the world's most famous resurrection being celebrated next week, it's only fitting that another resurrection happens this month. The SRX series is back from a basically certain death. The Skip Barber Racing series announced on Friday that they had purchased the assets of SRX Racing. The former SRX CEO, Don Hawk, now joined Skip Barber Racing as their chief strategy officer. We'll see how that works out for them. But the series that once felt like it was gone forever after they announced back on January 11th that they'd be postponing their 2024 season is now apparently has a bit of life in it. Somebody gave it one of those testosterone shots, just really got them hyped up, soared back to life, sprung up like that Undertaker gif. I know nothing about wrestling, but I do know that gif. And now they're back after basically Tony Stewart and company just abandoned them, kind of like Jonah Hill talks about doing in Wolf of Wall Street with the kids that he had with his cousin. That was weird. Funny. Weird. It is interesting that Skip Barber bought them because Skip Barber Racing had already been a part of SRX since its inception. They were the ones that were maintaining all the cars and transporting the cars to the racetrack. So it's really kind of like them just taking that next step. Like, oh, we're 70%, we'll just go to 100% now. And now they have ownership of the cars, the assets, the IP, everything that goes along with it. The biggest question now is like, if you are working on a 2024 schedule, where are you going to end up at in terms of television racetrack wise i'd love to know where they're going to end up at but in terms of television because espn bailed on this project immediately right as soon as srx was like we're having problems they're like we're out of here we gotta go and they they wanted nothing to do with it i think they put out srx put out their statement at 501 espn at 502 said yeah we wish them the best like they were just happy to bail on it it seemed like um, we know SRX didn't get the best ratings in the world. They expected 3 million viewers when they were on CBS on network on Saturday nights. They got around 1.2 uh, million, kind of was their average, if not their height. When they went over to ESPN, they were averaging about 400 to 500,000 viewers, somewhere in that range on Thursday Night Thunder. So, yeah, the revenue from the TV was definitely down when they signed with ESPN, which contributed to their financial problems. And that's why they essentially closed shop back in January. They were like, the financial model doesn't work. We're not making enough money to support this series, which shouldn't really come as a surprise to anybody because we knew that the television contract was definitely less than what CBS was paying for it. Their sponsorship model didn't really seem to work. It was a lot of B2B. There wasn't a lot of, you know, you're paying us for your sponsorship to be here type of thing. And ultimately just didn't seem to work out. And they're crashing a lot of cars too. Paul Tracy single-handedly put this series right out of business. So where is SRX going to end up at? TV-wise, you're limited, right? Not going back to CBS, not going to ESPN. I think those you can go ahead and throw those out. Fox doesn't really have any place on their schedule for this in the middle of the summer. You can maybe argue that they could do something with it. Don't think that they will. Mav TV could be a place that it potentially ends up at flow racing could also be a place that this potentially ends up at or they could just spend the 2024 season live streaming on youtube like think mx5 cup on racer.com's youtube channel or something like that and then in the hopes of using that to then sell themselves for the 2025 season to a television partner a streaming partner something along those lines but i think it's going to be a uphill battle for sure we also have the issue of the IROC series being back in a sense. And now we have the two of them going head to head. It's CART, it's IRL, it's AFL, it's NFL. You know, the exact type of rivalries you would expect. Can the two of them coexist? No, they just can't when you get down to it. Unless, unless IROC somehow ties themselves to NASCAR becomes essentially what IROC used to be. A bit of a precursor the undercard of the weekend we'll run it on a you know saturday before the extended race or you know something like that that could potentially work while srx continues to be the short track series like you know spends its six weeks in the summer going around the different short tracks um in this country kind of like a grassroots thing those two can coexist they cannot coexist that they both want to race on short tracks in the middle of the summer that's just not going to work out so it's an interesting development I'm happy that SRX could potentially be coming back. It's an entertainment series. None of us are going into this thinking that this is a legitimate championship when it comes down to it. It's there for entertainment, and that's perfectly fine. There is a place for that in the motorsport landscape. We'll just wait and see what happens here. I am interested to see what kind of drivers they get for this because, again, this was supposed to be 
kind of like your all-star, your retired guys to get back out there. I did see somebody on Reddit the other day was like, why don't we have a Legends tour? You know how like golf has a senior tour? Why don't we have a Legends tour? Uh, we tried that one time at Bristol and we almost killed Larry Pearson. So probably not the best idea to continue to try to have these really old guys get out there. For now though, SRX is back in a sense. We'll have to wait and see. I'm excited to see what their 2024 potential plans are. Let me know in the comments if you're excited about this or if you just kind of wanted to see it go away. Um, like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.